welcome to Blue Jays today, where you boys always have something to say about the Blue Jays. I'm your host, Nicholas Playlock. And I'm your host, Adam Peddle. And today, we're going to be breaking down the must-draft starting pitchers that's for right. this upcoming Fantasy Baseball that's League right, in 2021. Right. Right. You guys are going to want to pay close attention if you're preparing for your drafts, mm -hmm. because these pitchers are some good steals and some good price for where they're going in the draft. Heck yes. Before we get into it, just make sure to smash that subscribe button, smash the like button, comment. Ring that notification bell, too, because you want to be up to date as we're getting closer to the season and spring mm -hmm. training. We're going to have lots and lots of new info and Blue Jay news for you guys. So much content. So much. Like, literally, like, a lot. We've been planning for this for a while. Oh, yeah, guys. <laughs> We've been planning. We've been planning. We've been uh, plotting and We've scheming. Been scheming. Scheming. What's that one Drake song? I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Anyways, yeah. but it's going to be a lot of good stuff coming soon. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's must draft starting pitchers. Nick? Who do you got for a must draft? All right, I will start us off. Um, I'm gonna start us. I'm gonna go like beginning ADP and then kind of go down. So mm. I'll start with my highest ADP guy first. That guy is Louis Castillo. He is going at an ADP right now of 31. That's pretty high. You gotta pay up for this guy, and I'm telling you, do it. I'm saying just pay up. Get him where he's being drafted because this guy is going to be a stud and I'm super happy to take him as my ace, as my first pitcher off the board. And being able to grab that guy in the fourth round is awesome. Like his K percentage, it's just through the roof and it gets better and better and better and better as time has gone on. He's young. He's what, 27, 28? 28. 28 years old, so we're only entering prime time right now, and the ERA, all the expected numbers, all the percentiles across the board for Louis Castillo continue to just get better. He should be in line for like all of the workload, and I just see this guy mm. blowing up and, and being awesome where you can where you can uh, yeah. draft him. Yeah, you know, you nailed it with the workload because, you know, for starting pitchers, you want to make sure you get that lots of innings, lots mm -hmm. of innings, strikeouts for sure, if, especially if you're doing points leagues. Strikeouts are huge yes. and category leagues as well. Uh, and also, yeah, the one thing if you're doing category leagues would just be the W's, but I would still pay for Louis Castillo. He's going to give the Reds a chance to win in, when in he end, plays. It's like in fantasy, you, you can never really like – chaser or even determine the w's because if he does pitch like i'm expecting him to oh pitch, yeah he's gonna get the w's. then the w's will come yeah exactly you know exactly right he's just gonna get that run support i just got flashbacks of reds and like the wild card when they literally Ooh. didn't do yeah, anything yeah i got flashback of memes of just like like it was like Zero. repeated like i remember there was this one cartoon <laughs> meme uh where it was like all the it was from like bugs bunny and like all uh, these guys were like missing this baseball that was like flying <laughs> through the thing Anyways, uh, hopefully that won't happen next year, but Louis Castillo mm. at 31st overall, pay up for it and be yeah. happy about it. Yeah, absolutely. And I got a guy coming in a little bit lower. I got actually got a lot of lower draft guys that you mm -hmm. want to make sure you grab at the end to fill out that rotation. Yeah, you kind of went lower. I was kind of yeah. like middle round or like high rounds for him and then kind of middle rounds. Yeah, yeah. I know because I, know I wanted to get like maybe some lower kind of steals, you know, in the must draft area. Because yeah. when you get deep into the uh, end of the baseball draft, there's a lot of garbage. You want to make sure you weed around that Avoid garbage. Avoid the garbage. Avoid, Avoid the, garbage the garbage. And draft someone like Herman Marquez, who's mm. going at an ADP of 165. That's around round 17 in a 10-player league. Yeah. Um, he's been excellent. But what I really want to point out here is because the Colorado Rockies are going through a bit of a rebuild, he might get shipped off. Now, he is signed until 2023 with the Rockies, but mm -hmm. I think he's got a good chance to be traded because when he's outside of the Rockies uh, stadium in Coors Field, yeah. his numbers are unreal. In, in 2019, his home and away numbers, his, he had an uh, ERA of 6.26 at home, Oof. and away he was 3.67. Okay, much more serviceable. Even better in 2020, oh, home stats were 5.68 ERA, but in a way of 2.69. Wow. And, and all across the board, he just performs like an ace when he's outside. So mm -hmm. expect him to get traded. Grab him really low because the upside's there. Uh, he's okay with the strikeouts, but he's going to get a lot of innings, especially last year. He was actually second in innings pitched. Well, you know what I also like about him, too, is even if he doesn't get traded, because let's let's just, you know, say he doesn't because yeah, that's let's, that's let's obviously assume. an let's outcome assume. that could happen. Um, he's still going to be very serviceable, getting you probably close to 200 innings, probably close yep. to 200 strikeouts, 
And, you know, his ERA is not going to be great. But at this point, where, where are you drafting him? I'm drafting him in the 17th round. You're drafting <laughs> him in the 17th round. So this should be, if you've done your draft properly, probably your fourth, maybe even your fifth pitcher yeah. at this point. Yeah. And to be able to solidify, you know, close to 200 innings that low. Really good. That's good. He's going to be the Colorado's ace. He should like, be this Literally, year. he is all they have. I, yeah. I'm there's no saying one, that there's ignorantly, no but one. Like, <laughs> I don't know any other guys. I mean, I know they're bad. So that's, I mean, all I know is Herman Marquez. This is a must draft for me, and it should be a must draft for you. Heck yes. Love to hear it, man. This guy, this next guy, I am so, so high on this guy. I love him. I've been talking to Adam about him for, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. ever since we did our research on this. I've been hyping this man up. I will not, I refuse to leave a draft without taking him because I just think he's such a steal. His name is Brandon Woodruff. His ADP is 43rd overall. So you're still having to kind of take this guy in the early rounds. But if you can get him in the fifth round, you're absolutely laughing. Very rarely can you draft a pitcher in the fifth round. You can wait to the fifth round, get your first pitcher and be okay with it, and I'd actually be okay with this. I see Brandon Woodruff pitching over 200 innings, and he's just going to be dominant with the Ks, man. Like, this guy should be in the same tier as Louis Castillo, should be in the same tier as, yeah, like, your Walker Bueller. Across the board, everything points to him being dominant. Last year, a whip under one, an ERA of 3.05, 91 Ks in 73.2 innings. And for the first time in his career, he should get the entire workload, which is the only reason I think he's not higher on this list right now. No, absolutely. Yeah, I think I think he's also being like kind of underrated when you compare to people like Louis Castillo and like mm -hmm. Nola, you know, everyone in those upper tiers. I mean, even the top three. Right. So you can get he gets kind of pushed down. So he's definitely a, a guy to grab, especially because, you know, when we, we made our um, top 10 pitchers, I did look at Woodruff. It's just like I think I just underrated him a little bit because he's, he's been consistent right out of the gate since he's joined the league. Yeah, I really think that a big part of it is because he hasn't had the opportunity to pitch for that 200 innings yet. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of like, ah, I don't know if I can totally trust you. Right. But in 2019, 121.2 innings, 143 strikeouts. Amazing. And the K percentage went up in 2020. So I really expect him to live at like a 31% K rate coming into this year, pitch for 200 innings, and solidify himself as being an elite, elite starter. If you can leave your draft in the first five rounds and have this guy as your second pitcher. Oh, you're laughing. You're laughing. <laughs> you're literally you're laughing. laughing. You're going to enjoy those strikeouts. Yes. Enjoy them, especially in a crappy-ass division in the AL Central. Oh, yeah. He's going to wreck gonna, them, bro. You're going to wreck. <laughs> now, another guy that kind of is being drafted a lot lower and kind of forgot about, honestly, and that is Mike Soroka on the Atlanta Braves. He's another one of my must-drafts. He's going at an ADP of 159. Pretty low. And, and he's averaging around somewhere between the 16th and 18th round. And I, I was actually kind of shocked why he's going that low. Last year, he had a season-ending injury, ending his season abruptly after, I think it was like his third or start or something. But he, he's not going to K a lot of guys. But the thing is, what he's going to do is eat innings for Atlanta Braves. Atlanta Braves, they have Max Freed. And then the number two is Mike Soroka. Right. He's going to be a reliable player. In 2019, he had an ERA of 2.68 over a course of a full season and 174 innings pitch. He has great upside for a price so cheap. Mm -hmm. And like we we're saying, you know, him being your fifth pitcher, or fourth pitcher, his upside is so high. There's no reason why you shouldn't be targeting this guy mm -hmm. yeah, at I, all. Well, I, I think that you put it that way. It's like, you know, for me, it comes down to the ADP. And and the fact is, you know, at this at this rate, at, what did you say, 153? Uh, 159. And 159? Uh, between the 16th and 18th round, he's going. Okay, on. so in that case, we're it's ready to throw the darts, man. Yes. It's time to toss the darts, get some upside. Because if you've done your draft properly, he's probably your fourth or fifth pitcher. And if I can grab a guy with significant upside at that fourth or fifth pitcher spot, yeah, maybe they bust, but maybe they break out. And I think that you're right. He has a great chance of breaking yeah. out. He had a great 2019 year. I remember playing fantasy and everyone wanted Mike Soroka. Mm -hmm. He was a higher draft. He was going in like middle rounds last year, like upper middle rounds last year. And the fact that he's literally like going so late, it's a must draft for me. All right. All right. Love to hear it. We'll be grabbing Mike Soroka mm -hmm. whenever I can. Mm -hmm. Um, This guy, my last guy, 
It's a guy who I, I think is getting very disrespected where he is right now. He did have a bad year last year. Yeah. But a lot of people had a bad year. You know, Bellinger, as far as his career stats, had a bad year. He's being taken the second round. Uh, you know, Yelich had a bad year. He's being taken first to second round. Oh, I would love to take Yelich in that in that turnaround spot. <laughs> Me Steel. too. Me too. And and a guy that I would love to take in the thirteenth round is Patrick Corbin. <laughs> Um, wow. In 2019, in 2018, he pitched over 200 innings, had a lot of strikeouts. Like if for his 2019 stats, he had an ERA of 3.25, a WHIP of 1.183, and 238 Ks in 202 innings pitched. Um, I had to pay for him because I wanted him last year, and I had to grab him in the fifth round. Yeah, literally which around I that did. around that Woodruff area, which you should have. Yeah, which I did, and and he surprisingly uh, struggled last year. He did struggle, um, but I just I do not see this man uh, dropping from the the pace and the and the place that he was at, and going to the four point six six ERA that he had last year, and then continuing that. There is no way. Um, this is just it comes down to that season being yeah, shortened. That's it being exactly a shortened what sample it is. size. He will bounce back, and if you can get this guy in the 13th round as potentially your third or even fourth pitcher, amazing! I think that you're doing so good because the upside of 200 innings is there, yeah. and uh, you, you just you, you need to smash it every time. I was quite shocked. Like I knew that he was going to drop a little bit just because of his performance last year, but I thought he was going to drop to maybe seventh round, eighth round to drop to the 13th. That is unreal. Well, and and like let's actually talk about it. like the guy pitched for 4.66 ERA. That's definitely not elite, no. but it's also like not so bad that I'm like, oh, like he's yeah. awful now. It's like, no, I think he just had a rough start and uh, yeah. didn't have enough time to bounce back. And I'm going to look at someone's track record. Like there there really is just, it was just a bad year. It was bad two months. That's all it is. Pretty much. And pitchers have bad two months all the time. All Clayton, the time. Clayton Kershaw starts off the year sometimes with a 4.8 ERA. Yeah. I've literally looked, looked at his months, but that's just what it is. I think that it's an amazing steal and you're going to want to grab this guy mm -hmm. absolutely as a must draft. For sure. In the 13th round. Sign absolutely Sign absolutely and finally the last pitcher we have on this must draft he is going very very late i almost wanted to make this guy a sleeper but he he's still be, he's going to be drafted to every single team okay and that is tristan mckenzie mm -hmm. he's 23 years old the number three prospect for the super cleveland e indians super duper young he's going between the 18th and 20th round right now for right. a 10 player league around the adp of 172 and i love this guy because cleveland they just farm pitchers and in 2020 he had an era of 3.24 a whip of 0 0.9 strikeouts per nine 11.3 and it's incredible he played he pitched 33 innings so he got his you know his sample size work mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. i think this guy's got absolutely ridiculous upside because there is you know that you have bieber coming out of there you had clevenger coming out of there you have so many lead pitchers you had bauer coming out of there you had kluber coming out of there they just breed pitchers and this guy is an incredible prospect and he's going to absolutely smash it this year he's going to get a chance there's going to be he's going to pitch a lot this year and i can't wait to grab this yeah. guy you for know, that price like at, at some point you got to look at the track record of the team and notice oh wow Clearly, they're doing something right yes. here. The race, um, for example. And, you know, it's like I, I wouldn't pay up for this guy, but I don't think that paying for him in the 18th to 20th yeah. round is unreasonable. No, I have to – this is where you have to filter through literal trash guys in this in yes. this, in this this area, and, and you want to pick out the little diamond in the roughs. Mm -hmm. Just pick him because what's the worst case scenario that could happen? Oh, he goes down with an injury. Oh, he's underperforming. You just drop him. But yes. if you can grab this guy and hang on to him for a couple months and he blows up – you're going to be laughing. You're going to be winning your fantasy league. Yeah, totally, totally agree. And I think that a lot of the guys that we mentioned on this list have league winning upside from where they're being taken. Absolutely. You know? It's like, uh, yeah, like honestly, a strategy of mine that I'm going to be going into is literally taking like Castillo and Woodruff fourth, fifth round, taking bats in the top three. So I get elite bats. Then mm -hmm. I get my one, two punch that I think is going to be dominant. Mm -hmm. And then waiting on a guy like Patrick Corbin and then grabbing like a German Marquez and a Tristan McKenzie and Absolutely. calling it a freaking day and being happy about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You want to lock down people who you know are going to be reliable studs, not guys who maybe had one good year and then it's like, oh, and like that's kind of it. Yeah, Tristan McKenzie had one good year, but that was his only year. But he's also a number three prospect. Yeah, and he's also being taken in the 20th round. Literally. So, so you, I can warrant exactly. taking them down there. There's guys in the middle rounds that are kind of like Tristan McKenzie that's like they had one good year. It's like, but you really need to rely on that track record, especially if they're being drafted next to other guys with really good track records. Mm. Really focus on that track record, guys, and the reliability. And you guys are going to be winning your fantasy in, leagues. In the end, I always look at it like this. Like, yes, 
I might miss out on the upside. I might. I might miss out on it. I might. But I need to say that I'm okay with missing out on this upside because I do, I recognize that the bust potential is real. Yeah. That's why somebody, um, and I, I don't think he's going to make my must avoid list because I do think he'll be good. But a guy like Trevor Bauer is right now being taken um, early mm. second round. Right, right. You know, he had an amazing, amazing year last year. It was, right. Uh, it was, he um, won Cy Young. It was, yeah, it was incredible. <laughs> yeah. But his whole career has been up and down and up and down. It's right. been a roller coaster. So rather than pay up for him in the second round and hope that I hit that upside, I'd much rather wait on it, avoid the bust, and take a guy like Louis Castillo two rounds Yeah, later. and you know who else I, I would much rather take who's going right next to Trevor Bauer is Freddie Freeman. Freddie Freeman. Exactly. You the, want to talk about stability? Stability. And he, like, arguably every year, he could be top five every single year. Every single year in your yeah. fantasy league. You know he's going to do it again. There's no reason not to. I'd much rather have him than Trevor Bauer, who might do it again. Yeah. Rather than someone who will do it again. Totally, totally mm -hmm. agree. I, uh... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, guys, if, if that was helpful to you at all, please let us know in the comments down below. If we missed out on any potential big breakout must draft guys, then please let us know. I also want to see um, like screenshots of your fantasy teams and, yes. and, and we'll grade them for you. So if you follow us on Instagram, yes. uh, then please feel free to DM me um, any of your shots. I, we will we will look over yeah, your team. Yeah. We'll give you a grade. We'll tell you what you should be looking at, yeah. trading for. Improving on stuff. everything. Yeah, and as well, guys, that's in our description. As well in our description is our Google Podcast, Anchor, Radio Public Breaker, and Spotify. Mm -hmm. And you can also check us out on our Twitter. Our Twitter is manned by Dylan, who's doing an amazing job. Mm -hmm. Love that. Love the tweets. We're being liked and commented by Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. That's yeah. awesome. Right? And you can also check out our website. Patreon is $3 a month. You guys can come on the show. We're having our new show, Wine Unwind, advertising it. It's two weeks away. You guys can come on, call us as we're just chilling. Drinking some wine, talking about baseball. Uh, merch down below too. Buy a hoodie, buy a hat, buy our shirts. They're lit. They're mm -hmm. lit. Be a part of the community. Exactly. Yeah. I also just want to say too that this coming Sunday, mm. uh, usually we're doing our mock drafts on Saturday, but we're yeah. going to do our live mock draft on Sunday this mm -hmm. week. And we're going to be having a very special guest on. I was just double checking to make sure that I got his YouTube name yes. right. It is Robbie Hyde. He's awesome. Very similar to us. Very similar to our style. We love him. We're super excited to have him on. Uh, we will link his YouTube channel down below as well. Absolutely. And thanks and, so much for watching. And go Jays go. Oh. Let's go.